With TV shows being canceled all the time, either due to ratings, budget, or even the departure of a cast or crew member, many series end prematurely before the satisfying conclusion has wrapped up the premise. Among the hundreds of shows to get canceled, a few gems stand out that for some reason or another won't be tying up any of its mysteries or character arcs. Yet with streaming having already saved a few popular series from drowning, such as the likes of Lucifer, Sci-Fi's The Expanse, or even more recently Futurama, it is quite possible to bring back a few other shows, hopefully sooner before it's too late. I'm Jamie, the newest member with Bat Ninja Studios, and this is 12's TV series that deserve a second chance. Number one, Kidding. A poignant show about grief, Kidding had genius writing and even more incredible acting by its impressive cast, including Frank Langella, Katherine Keener, Judy Greer, Justin Kirk, and of course, Jim Carrey. The show focuses on the life of Mr. Jeff Pickles, a Mr. Rogers style person who is the same in real life as he portrays on his television show, Pickle Barrel Falls. Earlier, before the show's timeline, Jeff's wife and twin sons were involved in a car crash, which turned fatal for one of the twins. Throughout the series, Jeff struggles to try to hold on to his family, hold on to his show, and bottle up his emotions as everything around him seems to want to tear him apart. Darkly comedic, and at times wonderfully emotional, this show ended way too soon before we got to see Jeff heal from his wounds, just as he was learning to embrace the truth of it all. Number two, Castle Rock. Set in the Stephen King universe in a fictional town of Castle Rock, the first season saw Athene open up a two-dimensional crossover, hinting that classic King characters like the Man in Black and the Crimson King were beginning to influence the realm of Earth from Midworld. The show dropped tiny hints at the expanded Kingverse, either through mentions, crossing storylines, character appearances, newspaper articles, and especially in season two, which showed the origins of Annie Wilkes, the antagonist of the Misery novel. With mentions of Derry and a plot that slides heavily into Salem's Lot territory, it was a very well done and spooky series by the end of the second season. Sadly, it looks like it, we won't be seeing Leland Gaunt opening up shop in the third season. There is so much story potential here, a truly missed opportunity. Number three, The Magicians. I'm gonna admit, I haven't read the books, but this show was amazing. And while the ending we got does have a finality to it, spoiler alert, the earth exploded. The showrunners had way more story in mind, yet sadly, it got too expensive to produce. However, say a certain streaming service or premium cable network were to get involved, I would definitely be first in line for season six. Number four, Freaks and Geeks. Hear me out. All the actors grew up in their own wonderfully weird ways. What if they did a second season now as all of them in their adulthood and how they might have turned out? Did Lindsay and Nick end up together? Is Ken still just a lazy pothead? Did Kim ever learn to chill out? Is Daniel out of prison or did he make something of himself? So many questions, so many unexpected places to take them. Many of us who watched the show when it first aired were teens ourselves. So it would be a bit of nostalgic bliss and interesting commentary to see how their lives turned out against our own. Number five, the OA. Okay, so Ken Watanabe as the Lovecraftian telepathic octopus in season two is still stuck in my mind. Never mind that finale about the universes crossing over and Jason Isaacs, Dr. Hap, pretending to be himself the actor, Jason Isaacs. This is just mind bending. A very misunderstood show, but with some interesting mysteries, the only thing it had an issue with was its pacing. But if Netflix could see it in themselves to give it one more shot, just to wrap things up, I think it could make for an ex epic exploration in multiverse collision storytelling. 
Number six, Dead Like Me. I know, I know they made a movie that sort of concluded the storyline of the original ser series. Sort of. But forget that. The premise of Dead Like Me is literally watching people who died, becoming Grim Reapers, and getting a sort of second chance at figuring out their life without having to go through purgatory. A brand new cast of characters would be completely welcome, as long as the chemistry is there. They could even vary the ages this time a bit more, with some being much older and or even a child castmate. Either way, the concept is brilliant, and I would love to see it back. Number seven, The Punisher. One of the best Netflix Marvel series to date, if not the best. Don't get me wrong, Daredevil was fantastic. Both Luke Cage and Jessica Jones had great episodes, and then there was Iron Fist. But from start to finish, The Punisher was everything it needed to be. Frank Castle getting revenge on those who killed his family with John Bernthal doing an outright savage portrayal of the character, amazing choreographed stunts and fight scenes, and some interesting emotional story beats amongst the heavy action, The Punisher completely deserves a third season, even if that is on Disney+. Plus. Just don't tame it. Number 8, Hannibal. It's Hannibal Lecter. He plays mind games with the authorities trying to capture him, eats his victims, but somehow brings class to it all. Who wouldn't want to see more of this? Mads Mikkelsen does one hell of a job playing the titular character, and his relationship with Hugh Dancy's Will Graham makes for a spectacular game of cat and mouse. The show has so much more potential leading up to the eventual introduction of Clarice Starling. Fans of the series have been petitioning for the series to come back, and you can add my name to the list. Number 9, Mindhunter. Created by the always technically impressive David Fincher, the series explored the early days of the FBI's behavioral science unit and a newly coined term, the serial killer. Following two agents, Bill Tench, played by Holt McCallany, and Jonathan Groff's Holden Ford, respectively. They would set up meetings with convicted killers such as the notorious Ed Kemper, chillingly portrayed by Cameron Britton, and recorded their analysis of patterns and psych evaluations. A B story running throughout the series also sets up Richard Rader, also known as the BTK killer. And unfortunately, we never see the story's completion as the series ended on an abrupt cliffhanger. Due to contract negotiations and behind-the-scenes difficulties, it seems unlikely this series will ever come back to the Netflix streaming service. But if it does, I will definitely tune in. Number 10, Sliders. The original show saw inventor Quinn Mallory create the interdimensional sliding device, a TV remote with a fancy-looking countdown timer that allowed him to visit alternate Earths. Accidentally overpowering it during a demonstration to his professor, he inadvertently sucks in his friend and sometimes crush, Wade, as well as on the rebound R&B music legend, Remy, and ends up stuck in a different reality. Without the coordinates to return back to his original home Earth, each episode had them explore a new reality, waiting for the timer to count down and open a new wormhole hoping that the next one would take them back home. If rebooted this time without the Cro-Magnons, this series is full of potential, constant adventures on alternate Earths, done in a Monster of the Week style. With a decent budget, a good cast of likable characters, and a revolving room of writers, this could be one hell of an anthology series, perfect for a streaming service like Amazon Prime. Number 11, The Muppets. I'm talking about the 2015 series, the one made to look like a mockumentary. This show had that subtle adult humor mixed with family-friendly comedy, extremely talented actors and voice actors, and hilarious plots. Following the titular Muppets, moving from a live stage show to a TV broadcast station, it sees Kermit struggling to be a producer in the modern era 
dealing with a larger-than-life talk show personality that is Miss Piggy and the antics of several key cast members. A wonderfully funny show, it was canceled way too soon, but only after 15 episodes. Bring it back now. Number 12, Almost Human. Carl Urban has recently made an impact playing Billy the Butcher on Amazon Prime's The Boys. But before that, he was part of a little show called Almost Human, playing a human detective partnered with an AI cyborg played by Michael Ely. It had witty writing, an interesting overarching plot, good action, and all the sci-fi nerdy you could want. Cancelled because it cost too much to produce and wasn't bringing in the CSI ratings, it had its legs cut off too soon. But, and I'm looking at you Netflix, you could totally resurrect this series. Thanks for checking out this video. Any shows that we may have missed? Feel free to drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay up to date on our latest releases. You can reach us at on Twitter at Studios Fat or chat with us on Discord. Link in the description below. I've been your host, Jamie. Thanks for watching.